Candy, after you heard the rumors about LaToya and the Prophet, you actually give LaToya a bit of a heads up. I heard you got a new boyfriend. I do. Drew said something about uh, the, the Prophet. LaToya was my friend before she even came into this group. So to me, if there was a rumor being dropped on her about who she's dating or not dating, I just kind of felt like she should get that heads up before walking into this mess. You know, that whole thing was weird. So it was the prophet that was actually gonna do the baby blessing. It got back to me that they are like together now. Are you like, serious? I can't do the baby blessing. Latoya, I love you to death, but I'm not giving you that much power. No. <laughs> like you can't block blessings around here. <laughs> Drew wanted to cancel her whole entire baby christening because she thought that the prophet and I we're dating. So I've now had to cancel my baby blessing because of your ass. Because, because of me. Even if we were, what does that have to do with blessing your child? He's still a man of God. What he does in his personal life really has nothing to do with you. I do believe she said that the um, prophet was engaged to someone. And even still, I was just like, okay, so I've seen plenty of people be engaged and be unengaged in two seconds. So I'm right. just like, whether or not he's choosing to respect his own relationship, that's his own personal business. And it still shouldn't have had anything to do with Drew. The thing about it is the prophet and I are friends and he was engaged three years ago and he recently met Drew and Ralph. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like they had a relationship at all. Well, that's not the impression I got. Prophet lied. It's been a part of our family for many, many years. Wow. The fact of the matter is, we were not speaking on those terms. We were not dating. I was getting sound counsel from him from a prophetic standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint. It had nothing to do with us being together. I would never speak to a man who's engaged. That's like blocking my own blessings, you know what I'm saying? Because if I'm engaged, I would never want my man to be speaking to another woman, you know? Yes, I am going through a divorce, and if I choose to date or not, who cares? Adam's out there dating as well. We have an understanding. Why is that such like evil in your eyes, Drew? Like you had a child out of wedlock, but nobody torments you about that. So I don't understand why Drew is so concerned on what I'm doing in my life. You need to worry about what you got going on when it comes to your husband, not me. So Latoya, at the Bailey Wine Cellar, Drew actually confronts you about the profit rumors. Profit lied. It's been a part of our family for many, many years. Wow. He was actually doing my baby's blessing. Wow. And he had to pull out wow. because of the drama circulating with his family and all that you got going on uh, over me. there. You know, she first of all didn't even show up to the pop-up shop. Like she did not support black businesses. And then she waltzes in with this negative energy. Drew said that she was actually out with um I had gotten a call from Prophet Lot. What what are you talking about? He said you were upset because I had found out that you guys have been seeing each other. So She's baby. such a drama queen. I didn't want to bring it up. But it was almost like, well, it's out the closet. You know, we're talking about it. You've told some people, and now we got to discuss it. It's not no made-up story. And so if you just don't want to be honest, then that's fine. But if you're on a spiritual journey, I think the first step is just to tell the truth. You don't know what well, the f I'm you're talking up. about. She's trying to make it seem as though I'm crazy, but legit, I had to cancel my baby blessing. You're messing with a prophet, a man of God, and you're married. Let's talk about it. The whole situation was just kind of crazy. It was like the story sounded crazy. He's been calling my husband, everything that's fallen out with his fiance. So I've now had to cancel my baby blessing because of your ass. Because, because of me. Because of your ass, oh, I gave wow. your ass because a ride of home. Me. This sounded like something from a daggone soap opera. Didn't you tell Cynthia you met somebody that's from Texas? Probably, is he from Texas? Honestly, it was none of our business. It really was none of my business, but look, once she told me, I was invested, okay? Like, I was like, I gotta get to the bottom of this. Robin lied. 
And he broke up with his fiance. Oh no. And he has a baby. Okay. What does that have to do with me? Cause like, you oh, see okay. how hurt she is. Wow. Like she really is not having her baby blessed. So much is riding on these relationships that have been formed over the years. And then here comes Toya. If you're playing with the church. You're playing with the prophets. You know what? You're praying on prophets. Has... And you got that Delilah spirit. And that's a problem. And what? She started calling her names out the Bible. Like basically saying <laughs> you were a whore. She is a Hila spirit. And there are women that you have to watch out for that prey on men, married men, you know, men of God. Even if you are a man of God, you won't fall short. You can fall short because you're still a man. You're not Jesus. You're not perfect. And I felt like her spirit really preyed on a man that was trying to live right. He had a family and it was disgusting. I'm tempting a grown ass man. I'm not a Delilah. In fact, Drew, you're a Jezebel. What? And that's just that. Wait, why is she a Jezebel? She's a whore. Oh my God. She called me a whore, she's a whore, okay? Maybe she should be a whore in her bedroom and her man wouldn't be in Florida. How about that? I'm over it. I'm not. So there was a huge fight about the prophet, about Latoya, about Drew at the Bailey wine cellar. Oh, that whole prophet situation's a mess. You're playing with the church. You're playing with the prophets. You know what? You're praying on prophets. Has... And you got that Delilah spirit. And I'm still not clear on what really was happening with the prophet. I mean, at one point, Latoya called one of the prophets at Kenya's house. Well, I'm going to call the f***ing prophet. Oh. Hi, Prophet Lot. Say hi to all my hi. friends. I was just really trying to clear the air because Drew was just lying on my name and I was really trying to clear that up because I don't want a reputation where I'm speaking to a prophet and he might be engaged and I'm like breaking up a family, you know? Candy even had a conversation with the prophet as well. They accused um, you and Latoya of having some type of relationship. I never admitted that to them. Oh I just admitted to them that I was advising her. And I'm not gonna allow anybody to control me. This, this is what I do. There you go, control. So you never had a intimate relationship? No. no. It seemed like he wanted to clear his name, so he was very yeah. forthcoming with his answers. Were you engaged? No, engaged. Have you ever been engaged, engaged this year? I'm not engaged. How many years? Three years ago adamantly denied like everything. I mean, I don't know a lot about prophets, but I'm inclined to believe that they are chosen people from God who tell the truth about stuff. So I don't know. Now there was something that I did not ask that when we brought it up to Drew the next day, she was like, well, did you ask him about her getting him a hotel room or something? But really for me, I didn't feel like it was a real need for us to go any further with it. Like at the right. end of the day, if, they didn't have a sexual relationship or whatever. Even if they did, I wouldn't have cared, to be honest with you. Right. Because I, in my mind, these are two grown, consenting adults. So if they met each other and they connect on some level where they like each other, I mean, Toya is not ugly. If he looked at her and thought, oh, she's pretty, and, and eventually it turned into something, it wouldn't be that over the top for me. So I just didn't understand what the issue was. She's just trying to paint me out to be this terrible person. And I was just there to clear my name. Obviously, you know, I said some things in the past to hurt her and her wig. She has a pen on her head. Stop okay, it. but I don't have a problem with Drew. We're talking about your struggling oh, husband. Yeah. Let's do it oh, don't do this. You don't know nothing about my struggling husband, though. What kind of married woman would be all up on bolos, bolo like that? Huh? Just shut up because you don't know what well, the f you're talking up. about. I just have an issue with the wigs that she decides to wear and her fashion sense. Drew was really trying to, you know, throw me under the bus and make me look like some Delilah, which that's not me. And if I was talking to the prophet, I would have been like, hell yeah, he's getting all this holy drip, okay? She <laughs> Cynthia, you and Portia co-hosted an incredible event. Like, I hope you guys sell a lot of products. 
You want this one? Yeah, I got some good stuff. Yes, we did. Oh, good. The Black Lives Matter movement is so much bigger than, you know, just all of the injustice that's going on. You know, it just kind of opened everyone's eyes that we were just in a real time where we really need to focus on supporting each other. Uh, with that said, I love when I'm in a great place with Portia. You know, we go back and forth as well. However, when it comes to business, we always support each other. See you soon. We love yes. you guys. Hashtag mm -hmm. support like own businesses. That's right. All right. That was good. It was a great opportunity. I was glad that she asked me to co-host it with her. It's really important. You know, in this pandemic, a lot of businesses have been hit hard and we're trying to support our black brothers and sisters. So what better way than for us to use our platforms and our companies to showcase other companies? You know, it's a lot of people suffering, but then there are also a lot of people who starting businesses for the first time and it's a great opportunity to support them. So I thought it was a great idea what um, Cynthia did. Latoya, what did you think of it? I know you arrived a little bit late. A little bit? What you doing over here? Hey, you came in our light and now you get service. Okay, this is the thing. We were just doing some last minute errands and then time just flew by. Let me just say this. I'm always late, but I'm always on time. What? <laughs> so I was late because I wanted my pop up shop to be perfect. And so my assistant and I we were running through Atlanta trying to get all the decor. We get to the pop-up shop and Cynthia actually gave my table away. And I was kind of hurt by that, but I also understood that, you know, I'm late. I came like at the end of the whole pop-up shop, but I did show up, I did support, although I didn't have a booth of my own, which I would have loved to have had a booth because that was, this, that's how it was supposed to be. But Cynthia gave it away because you I was late. You were supposed to show up on time. I know, but you I was late. You disrespected the booth, so you lost the booth. I'm always late, I'm trying to do better. I've been that person myself that was always late all the time. If you were here for me, you'd have been here long before midnight now. I'm keeping it 100 with y'all, good night. A couple years ago, I decided myself to let that be something that I fix. When you're late constantly, it's just kind of disrespectful and you're disrespecting other people's time and at the same time disrespecting other people's money because people were paying for each booth, you know what I mean? And you kind of just right. like left a booth open that she could have basically let another business get that booth, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I totally understand that. But although I wasn't able to promote my businesses, I was there to support the black owned businesses there. And I did apologize to her. And I'm happy that another black owned business was able to take over my booth and promote their services or products.